Hello and welcome to Cartoon Commentaries. Today we're going to be watching Animaniacs. We will be watching Hooray for North Hollywood Part 1. And now get your DVD, or if you have on the DVD, it's in from Volume 4, Disc 3. And get ready to press play now. Whenever you see the Warner Brothers Family Entertainment logo, you know you're probably going to be in for a good time. No matter how many times I see this intro, pretty much every single time I always can't help but sing along. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the characters. And now's the the new verse that they added. I'm not sure why they kept Rita and the I'm not sure why they kept the Rita and Runt part in because Rita and Runt haven't been in episodes since the first season. Aside from just doing cameos. Uh, those variable verses are always the best. Yeah, this is the episode. Yeah, these Goodfellas bits, I think, I think probably could have been cut, probably. Or at least, if they're going to include the Goodfellas, include more of the secondary characters. Yeah, I do like the Goodfellas, though. But I like Reed and Runt more, and also I like Pinky and the Brain more. And then the hip hippos and Minerva Mink. And the Water Bros Water Tower, which is always bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And the layout always changes from episode to episode. And the sound effect previous episode. That involved typing. That's one heck of a script. And now comes one of the best songs. Yeah, this... These two-parter has some of the best songs. And I don't, I don't know if any of them actually made it onto any of the CDs. Since those CDs are so expensive. And those, this song is one thing that the best Animaniacs songs do. Which is, it's catchy, well written, has a good beat. And it works. Whether you have... when you. you and it works whether you're you're watching the movie or just listening to it on its own.
And I wonder how many kids these days would understand all these references. Yeah, Don Knotts. He's pretty great. And lots of references. Uh, the old, you'll never recognize this town again line, which pretty much seems to be mandatory for any movie that takes any story that takes place in Hollywood. Someone has to say, you'll never work in this town again. I'm not sure if Ms. Hoffenmeyer actually thinks she walks. You think, since she's been working here for a long time, you think she'd know who the Warners are. But then again, she rarely ever shows up, even in the episodes that take place in the office. She's rarely ever there. I think she makes le less appearances than Miss Full Meal. You know, you think that she'd be a major character. No, that's beg the question though that are there humans and tunes or are everyone a tune? Because people can like disintegrate and, and reform and like, have animals dropped on them and stuff. Now this joke is actually funnier now than it was then. And also shows just how bad of a executive that Mr. Plotz is. And now here's going to become another really catchy song. Yeah, this two-parter has some of the best catchiest music. Randy, Ro Randy Rogel sure went out of his way when he was writing the songs for this. You know, this isn't a song you hear very often when people are talking about the best of Animaniacs songs. You know, some of these references are out of date, like the Michael Eisner stuff, but even with that, it's still a pretty fun, catchy song. Yes, Animaniacs promoting talking and driving, talking on the phone and driving. Now this is probably the funniest one part. This is actually pretty spot on, actually. This is probably something that a studio executive is probably 
act like probably. Antonio Banderas. Uh, I'm not sure if he would be someone who would be on the A list. Uh, pagers. Well, that's a, that's probably a deep cut for kids today. Yeah, I do find it interesting how. It went from being packed to all of a sudden now this room's completely empty. Ah, poor Hampton. A little fun little thing. Keep an eye on Mr. Plotz's the back of his head. That was a funny little cue right there. Ah, oh, the, the old, that's good, that, that's bad, back and forth. Now this part coming up is very interesting, because... Because now it switches to a completely different animation style. Because this part was clearly done separately from the main story. And it was probably a segment that was probably from a different episode that... You know, the song is very catchy, though. You know, R Rob Paulson's voice sounds... L Sounds very different. I guess this is, this is probably a much earlier segment that never got around to uh, airing, and they had to put it in somewhere.
Yeah, even though the song doesn't move the plot forward anyway, it's still a pretty catchy song. And since this song has shown up in... Uh, it's one of the very few songs from this from this episode that's actually been a song outside of the show. Like at conventions and, and stuff. And that explains Adam Sandler's career. Actually, that doesn't explain his career. Because most of his movies have been bad, yet he still ends up getting work. You know, that does explain the Michael Bay movies, though. Now that's not the type of joke I'd probably expect from Hysteria, not from Animaniacs. Now this part, this is probably like... Oh uh, yeah, that that's that's pretty uh adult joke. And now we get a redux of the variety song. One of the best songs from Animaniacs, but with a slightly different version. No, I think I like the first version better, but this one's still pretty good, though. Yeah, the thing about the Warner's eyes, there are some shots where their the pupils disappear and it's a bit uh, unnerving. It's like the eyes are like, look into the eyes will steal your soul. It's you know, funny trying to read the what the headlines of the newspaper are when you do for the close-ups. Of course, Wacko will be thinking about food. And back with the good feathers. Oh, 
You know, I like the Good Feathers. The one thing about them that because it's pretty much a lot of time the same joke being done over and over and over again, it's hard to really love them as much as you do the Warners or Rita and Runt or Pinky and the Brain. Because at least with those ones, there's there are at least slight variations on it. You know, the guy who voiced Pesto does a pretty good Joe Pesho, Joe Pesci impression. And we'll see you next time for part two of Hooray for North Hollywood.